Something's wrong. What's wrong? No! This tire's fine. That tire's completely flat. <laughs> It's so, it's so bumpy with a flat tire. You pulled my tire out, you stole my air compressor. I'm surprised this thing could make it. I know. <laughs> Finally, I got 12 more hours of air in my Taylor Dumb tire. Oh, da -da, da -da 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 -da, oh, Jesus Christ. This is my shipping container fortress that I built. It's a 20 footer, 20 footer, 40 footer. I made a U out of shipping containers and I put a bunch of gravel. It's like the only flat space I have to do anything. I bought a bunch of containers at the same time, a couple for open sauce and a couple for this. It's like a staging area. There's like, there's like actually eight inches of gravel. I spent way too much money on gravel, but it's rock solid. Do you get it? Because gravel is rocks. Jesus Christ, who writes these jokes? This is the cold saw, the metal metal cutting saw, and it's the there's a problem. Uh, it's a three phase motor. Three and we phase. Only have two phase power. What is three? Why is three phase a thing if it doesn't exist? It's the three phase in the room with you right now. So basically, you put volts, two twenty volts in here, and then it it craps out to three phase. Three, two, one. Oh yeah. Okay. The coolant is in a reservoir below this little grid filter. It comes up through the hose, through this mechanical pump that's driven by the, the motor kind of transmission gearbox, and then it comes up and then squirts out onto the blade. This thing rips! And look how straight that cut is. Wow, that's pro. That's pro. Dude, I love this it thing. It feels so smooth. It's like a, the perfect metal cutting machine because there's no sparks. It's not even that loud. It cuts fast. It cuts sharp. It cuts clean. The milfs of are still at it. Okay, lots of heavy equipment. Storage bins, giant gravel pit is being dug at the moment. Easy enough to drive by and get an eyeful. Just be careful on that wicked corner. This is weird, stop. Leave me alone, milfs. I'm not actually mad, it is, it is kind of weird though. It's actually really weird. I even got this cool one that has doors on the side. Is it, has it not been focusing this whole time? I need to move these containers. They're not in the correct space where I want them to be because when the trucks deliver them, they kind of just dump them off the back and there's not a whole lot of accuracy. Open Sauce 2024 tickets are available for sale right now. Who said that? These corners are how they maneuver containers. They're really strong. If I put a chain in this corner over the tractor bucket and into this corner, I can lift it. When, when it lifts, it wants to go vertical. The whole container smashes into the bucket. Do I, I don't, I do have to explain why I don't want that, but I have an idea. It's a good idea, it's a very good idea. The lathe is aligned and I got a tool on it and I sharpened it with a bench grinder and then I press this button and it turns on. All right, uh, lathe, lathe update. Um, the lathe is a, it's a piece of shit. <laughs> I, uh, I got a new belt, and then I realized that uh, everything's loose. Look at it, it runs great, it sounds great, but the whole, the whole this just, it like rocks back and forth. If you're anything like me, big things scare you because you don't really have any intuition. What, the container weighs empty 4,500 pounds? So unless you grew up, is there like a your mom, a really fat joke in here somewhere? Your mom is so fat that you intuitively understand how to lift a shipping container. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So what did I do? I made the computer solve it. I'm not doing that by hand. So these, these sketches represent the shipping container corners. This body is the actual shipping container and everything else is the bracket I'm gonna make. I put a 1500 pound vertical load on this bracket because 4,500 pounds of the empty container divided by four is like 1,100 or 1,200, so I just put a little bit more to be safe. So then I ran the simulation and these are the results. It's all green and blue, which is good. Happy birthday to you. Shot, shot, shot. Happy birthday. 10 a.m., crack one open. Kevin turned, to Kevin turned 40 years old today. Here, can you hold the camera? No. Thanks for the shirt, Sandra. I can't see, so I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Like, why would you turn it at you? I got that dog in me! If you're having problems with your parts failing the analysis with a lot of red and yellow in the simulation, change the scale on your FOS to start with green at 0.5, and then all your problems will go away. 
just a helpful trick. Why don't you just put it in the garage? There's no room. What do you mean? Just pull the electrical stuff out. Are you fucking high? Like actually, this is literally the same size as the pallet. All you have to do, look, you don't even have to move it. You just start pulling and everything will get out of the way on its own. <laughs> this is never getting better, is it? I always tell myself that the mess is temporary and it, it uh, I think our existence on this planet is also temporary. And that's actually when the mess temporary ends. So this is your shipping container. You got your little corner hole here in your corner hole here. And you, you lift it, right? Because you have, you have a cable going from corner to corner and you lift it from the middle. You have a load horizontally, right? So this isn't pulling up, it's pulling that way. I don't know if you see where I'm going with this, but if you put a bracket on the corner and you lift it at an angle, it wants to pull it in. But since you have a triangle, if you lift it from low down instead of high up, which is how I have to do it with the tractor or the excavator to get the most lift, the horizontal load becomes enormous, like 4,500 pounds. So now your bracket is working less hard vertically and more hard horizontally. And you need more metal. We can't afford more metal. We actually, we, we, it's just all covered in rust and we don't want to clean the rust off of it. Yeah, there you go. The put the towel on there. You, Jesus, how many times did I tell you you have to put towels on the metal that's outside when it's raining? <laughs> what if you put a spacer in between the cable or the chain that's going between the corners. It forces at the brackets a vertical load. And then the, the bar in the middle is withstanding the 4,500 pound load. And now that I've said that so confidently, let's cut everything out so we can put it on the container and lift it up and watch it explode. Alex, what are you doing right now? I'm uh, getting an x-ray right now. This is like an animal x-ray, but it's the best we can get, so. Are you ready? You might yeah. feel a tingling sensation in your groin. Hmm. Uh, that's just me touching your girl. <laughs> so it turns out that using about uh, half the power of a laser and half the power of oxygen, you can cut through pretty much anything. So this is a new laser head. Uh, the old one exploded. We made our we made our cut inside of Lightburn, which if, uh, thank you guys, thank you Lightburn for the, the free license. If, uh, if you want some free, um, user experience input in exchange, I would gladly give it to you because there's a couple things in, in the software that don't make any sense. Three eight inch steel plate, 2000 watts of laser power. Oh, ah, okay. Okay, all right, cutting, 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 cutting. All right, cool. Arby's sauce check. All right, I got uh, horsey sauce. What kind of sauce do you get? Horsey sauce and then honey Dijon. Honey Dijon. So what, tell, me about the honey, tell me about the container that Honey Dijon is in. Well, my mom, I feel like she taught me this. We'd go to McDonald's, we'd put ketchup in there. Okay, that's a cup lid, Alex. This unfolded is the same thing. Okay, can you, can you do me a favor and lift the cup lid up? It's leaking, Alex. <laughs> okay, that's the, the RB sauce update. <laughs> Yo, those are, you know. That looks great That though. looks pretty good. Oh, oh, you know what? It doesn't really look that bad at all. What we learned is uh, the, the pierce point is very important because it's like, you don't want to have to start cutting through. You want to start all the way through already. And so even coming from the edge, I think did something kind of weird. The most important part of welding is to make sure your metal is clean. And that includes scale and rust, grease, oil and slime, blood, and all other fluids that could get into the weld and make it bad. So you gotta clean it, clean it good. Use acetone, use a grinder, use a sander. It's like painting, right? It's not about the painting, it's about the prep work. Look at that. And the prep work takes way longer than the actual welding. But if you do it, then everyone's like, oh, you're a good welder. And you're like, no, I'm a good grinder. I love grinder. I love grinding on grinder. It's like the finale of your favorite anime where did all the things they learn help them defeat the final boss? Uh, why, 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 why? Can I move a shipping container with things that I made myself? I don't know. All the stuff's rated, it's like a G7 rating, which I think means like, I don't know, like 7,000 pound rating. I think the chain is rated for like 8,000 pounds or something. So the chain comes down, hooks onto this corner bracket. This corner bracket lifts up, and because the chain's offset from where the pin is, it should rotate a little bit, so it should keep the bracket against here. 
Oh yeah, look at that. Oh. Oh. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, I would say that this works pretty well. <laughs> I would call that an astounding success. Dude, that was like, like eight feet in the air. So for the next part of the video, I'm gonna lift it up and Kevin's gonna go underneath the container. He's gonna film what it would look like from underneath a shipping container. You know, there's nothing in the container which makes this a lot easier, but there's still like, uh, you know, still a chance we broke something. No, it feels fine. <laughs> this is excellent. Success, you know, it wasn't a huge waste of, no. It was a huge waste of time. <laughs> I can't believe that worked. I have a favor to ask of you, and it's to come to Open Sauce 2024. Open Sauce is my attempt to bring to you guys what I wish I had when I was a kid. It's an event full of really smart people who do really stupid things. I mean, there's smart things there too, but most of the stuff people bring to open sauce to exhibit that I think is awesome are weird things, stuff that probably shouldn't have been made, but you did it anyways. It's just me putting my money into it and ticket sales that help us keep going because we have to pay everything before anybody wants to pay us. It's, it's fun, it's really fun how that works. If you have an interest in science and engineering or you wanna meet your favorite YouTuber from the STEM space, buy a ticket to Open Sauce or apply to exhibit, you can come for free. You just, you apply and if you get approved, you show up, you set up your thing, you get tickets for the people that are required to run your booth and you get to come to the Friday night party, which is extremely good, no exaggerations. Last year, Adam Savage was there at the party. So I'm just saying, if you if you want a chance to meet Adam Savage, that's probably the place to do it as an exhibitor. So right now, go to opensauce.live and buy tickets, or I'm gonna jump into this wood chipper. Here's a discount code. Here's like, I don't know what, 10% off? Here's a 10% off discount code on the screen. What is it? What is the discount code? It is a uh, wood chipper. Open Sauce 2024 is June 15th and 16th in the city of San Francisco at the Cow Palace. So go to opensauce.live right now and buy tickets if you wanna come and you wanna support me. All right, see you guys next week and at Open Sauce.